Hey guys, Bleaks here back with the NG0 tower guide. It's going to be basically everything you need to know to take on the tower the first time. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the Warlock. The Warlock is a spellcaster, but also has a melee uh, primary attack. He is one of the starting characters. His primary attack is a melee attack that puts a dot on the target. The dot does damage and you get health and mana equal to a percentage of the damage dealt. His second ability is a lightning bolt that chains between targets. His third ability is a gargoyle statue that procs lightning and deals damage to targets in the area. It will also chain to other gargoyles close by. Then his last ability is Eye of the Storm. It works similar to a gargoyle, but it follows around the caster. Warlock's first passive ability is Extended Domain. This extends the effective range of all Warlock skills by 15%. As you rank it up, it gets larger and larger until it is a max of 75%. The next passive skill is enemies that are affected by the soul consumption. That's the damage over time that's dealt by his primary. Have a chance to spread it to other enemies. So this chance increases as you level up Soul Cleaver. Lastly, he has Stormlash, which all bolts of lightning have a 25% chance to trigger a new bolt of lightning, dealing 25% damage, and then that goes up to 50% chance and 50% damage. As far as the priority for ranking up his skills, if you have tier 4 or more unlocked, I would first grab Stormlash. It's going to be a huge damage increase. Otherwise, I would look at getting some levels in the Soul Dagger as soon as possible. Followed by picking up Extended Dom Domain and Soul Cleaver. You can go back and forth between the ranks of Soul Cleaver and Extended Domain as you pick them up. Once you start getting some levels and your mana pool gets a little larger, you can start picking up Summon Gargoyle and also picking up Eye of the Storm. So from here, as I level up more, I'm going to finish out Extended Domain, Soul Cleaver, start getting more ranks and Summon Gargoyle to increase the max amount up to 4 and then up to 5, then also picking up Eye of the Storm to increase the damage and to increase the duration of it. At max rank it has 100% duration. After I have all of that, I'm going to pick up all the Lightning Bolt ranks. And just note that at level 30, you'll have enough skill stars to buy everything. So it doesn't matter too much what you pick after the first core amount, but if you feel like you have good mana regen, you can pick up some of the stuff earlier or later. But I usually tend to get mostly passives because they're, they're free or they increase the damage of your soul consumption, which gives you more mana and just allows you to have uh, more damage and sustain. Around level 15, you'll be looking at defeating the tower for the first time. I would recommend having uh, at least Guild Hall 4 unlocked to get your skills. You can maybe do it with 3. Also Blacksmith 3 for upgrades, Apothecary 2, and I would say Chapel 2 as well. I've tried to buy as many upgrades from the Blacksmith as possible. I didn't really have money until now, uh, but I bought everything in Tier 1, Tier 2, and most of the stuff in Tier 3, except for the crit stuff. But I definitely would have bought it if I had the, uh, the money at the time. You basically just want to get as many upgrades as possible and you can always upgrade the blacksmith more and get more stuff if you're struggling. Also you want to buy everything that the apothecary has to offer. You can upgrade the apothecary more if you need more potions and pick up effectiveness. Next is the chapel upgrades or blessings as they're called. The first one we pick up is Path of Defender. It's a much needed damage reduction. Next we get Blessing of Mind. This increases your main regen by 100% making Mana Regen a very good stat for us. And our skills are pretty expensive, so it helps keep our mana up so we can cast more and more skills. You don't need Tier 3 of the Chapel, and I haven't even gotten it yet, but if I were to get enough money to buy this, I would get Symbol of Wisdom. This decreases the mana cost of your skills by 25%. In the shop, you want to roll until you find Scepter of Kings. Uh, the other items don't matter as much as Scepter of Kings. You can... Keep rolling if you want to find more mana regen or maybe some stun or disarm items, but really Scepter Kings is going to be more than enough to get the run done for you. Just buy everything. Also don't forget to buy keys. 
I try to buy at least eight of each for NG0. Next up is drinks. No drinks are required for the run, but some are definitely recommended. Uh, the best one would be Smelly Old Man. It gives us the two mana regen, which will be doubled to four mana regen. Just going to be more stuff that helps us keep our mana high so we can cast more skills. Also, if you found the anvil at this point, you can look at crafting a common item before starting the run. Uh, you will have to have found the blueprint. So some good items are disarm items like Defender's Halberd. Stunned items like Blackjack, but I don't have the pattern. Also, Gladiator's Net is good, followed by some Mana Regen, like Ring of Mana, or Slippery Cloak for some evasion and defense. Last thing we have to do is set up our Fountain. Uh, this will use a pretty standard setup that we use for most of our builds, but it's going to be General Traps, so Traps deal 50% less damage. Safe Corridors, so there's less traps as we go around. I'm also going to pick up a Serious Guidance for more Monolith buffs. These buffs are pretty significant and will definitely help you throughout the run. Glass walks to let us get more treasure and skip some hard parts of traps. Treasure hunt to allow us to get more items throughout the entire run. Since we sustain off of our primary, I'm going to take lousy consumables. We don't have to worry about health and mana pickups. Enemy reinforcements will give us more XP. Enemy overseers. Many bosses uh, will drop keys and other items, which is very good. I draw adversaries, increase the movement speed of enemies, but that's okay because we're not really worried about how fast they move. And then we're also going to take dry springs because we're not really going to rely on potion charges. So being able to refill them isn't really a big deal. So this is a perfectly balanced, but you can always pick up Expedious Expedition, just to help you go faster, maybe outrun some of those Agile enemies. This is the one I would recommend if you have 450. If not, just drop the movement speed. Alright, so that should be everything you need to know to attempt the tower as the Warlock on NG0. Uh, if you want to check out myself um, beating the run with this exact build, you can check out this video. Also, we have a link to our playlist for the new profile series we've done, where we play through completely on a new profile. But good luck, and stay safe out there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.